Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Ayalanda Argent Show. And joining me today will be a woman that I had the pleasure of listening to through the Black Speakers Network. And hopefully I don't mutilate her name, so I'm going to unmute her here. Hello. Okay, there we go. So we're all good. <laughs> hey, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to do that thing where it does that thing. Well, you look cute. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. You know, spring over there. Eh. I know. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Now, say, let me, how do you pronounce your name? Ar it's Arlena Waller. Arlena Waller. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. Good part about editing. You love it. Yes. I love your hair, by the way. Thank you. I wish my hair looked more like yours. I'm telling you, this is way too many visits to the beautician. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Ilanda Argent Show. And joining me today is a wonderful speaker that I had the pleasure of hearing at the Black Speakers Network. Her name is Arlena Walker. And I, did I blow that again? <laughs> yes, you did. Waller. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Arlena Waller. I apologize. I hate, I hate messing up people's names. I'm so sorry. Well, remember me that way. <laughs> Okay, well, let, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, first of all, for inviting me to be on your show. Where, where do I start? I'm just this woman that's so passionate about life and really empowering women to be the best that they can be. So I take, I'll do whatever it takes, right? I'll get behind her, push her, pull her. But I'm an author, a motivational speaker, and I'm also a producer. I produce events for women to bring them together. Good to know. Good to know. I do, I do a promotion for events for women as well. And I do the speaker thing. And sometimes I get people's names right when I do it, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, so how long have you been doing this? So I've been producing events for over 10 years. I started with my company called Rich Girl Entertainment. And we would do like live talk shows. And then we would bring in the audience and it was just an amazing experience. I did that in Dallas, Texas for about six years. It was called Girls Do Talk. So it's just one of those things that you're really passionate about. And then of course, life kind of shifts. When I came to Bakersfield, I didn't have the same audience or relationships. So I started doing Girls Night Out. And that was great because nothing was happening in Bakersfield. And then I turned into a full social club last year, 2016, called She Power Socialites under my She Power brand. And what we do is each month we create a themed social and we invite women to come back and be little girls again. Because what I've learned through all my years of producing events, especially for women, is if we can get them to play and laugh and have fun and connect to the little girl within her, she's gonna learn whatever lesson we're trying to teach and it's going to stick. So true, so, so true. Well, you know, and it's, it's very true that women, we're, we're tugged and pulled and we're constantly being told what we're supposed to be. Absolutely. From the minute you, uh, somebody tells the mother to, to be that it's going to be a girl, oh, then it starts. Boys yes. don't have that. They just come out. They got a pecking order. They seem to figure it out, whatever. But women, it's constant. They never let up. You don't even get to be a little girl because they're too busy telling you how little girls should be. And I think that's important that we remember that space because that's really when we were powerful. We believed anything was possible and we didn't set limits on ourselves as a little girl. Even though society sets limits, we didn't set limits. When we buy into society limits is when we start creating an issue. So I really want us to get back to that space. I believe, honestly, whatever I set my mind to, I can do it if I'm willing to do the work. And a lot of things that I've been able to create have been things because I refuse to put boundaries on myself and really kind of stay you know, in that playful space of that little girl space, even though I'm a grown woman. 
Yeah, well, you know, that's true. And we have fun as women. And that's another thing that's good to get women together. Um, are you finding that women can be way catty? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because women, like I said, men have that natural pecking order thing. Women, on the other hand, they don't seem to have that. You know, the, the thing is, I came from a family with 10 girls, same mom and dad. So I believe that I was trained early to be a girlfriend and to be my sister's keeper and to take care of women, you know, from an early age. And so starting this social club for urban women, primarily 90% of the club is black women. And of course, it's open to all women. And we've had amazing members. I'm learning so much about women. And yes, the caddy is very, very real. But what I really try and do is get them to, what did he do? Girl, I'm sorry. To get them to focus on sisterhood and to really take responsibility of being your sister's keeper. If we look at women relationships from that perspective, the respect is going to be high. And we're going to value, even when we disagree, even when your sister did something, you know you can go and rip her neck off and you will not get punished for it because she deserved it. But when you look and say, I have respect for my sister, it's my job to take care of her, you're going to be a lot more gentle in handling her. And I think women have to get back to that space and be each other's keeper. We have to do that. Other than that, the cattiness, the fighting, the insecurities, all that stuff flare up and you have issues. Yeah, yeah. And of course, we have media to back up those issues because that's how they always want people to look at women and especially women of color. Yes. You know, the bad rap. Very. And, you know, and it's it's so hard to find, you know, find that space because everybody is constantly judging themselves based on what the media tells them. And then we need reminders like these kind of conversations to say, stop, time out. Don't do that. The media is not for you. It does not talk to you. I have a company called Baker Show Black. And what I do is I consult companies on how to market to the black market because our messages are received differently. So we have to be very vocal about our personal truth. I'm a proud black woman, I make no apologies for that, but I also understand that I have to be inclusive with all races. I can walk in any group and have a great time, but I understand my limitations. Just because you're loving me, I have limitations. And if you don't have limitations on me and you have them on my sister, you still have them on me. And so really, we just have to kind of remind each other, that does not define you. Be bold and excellent in who you are. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, you know, you brought up a good point. People need to be secure within themselves and find their own space. And just because you, you know, the good part about being a woman of color, you know that you can go anywhere and pretty much achieve anything because we've had to. Yes. Whereas that doesn't, you know, just because I can do that doesn't mean, you know, we have our limitations. Yes. And it, it kills me to watch people who want to act as though they don't have them. Right. And then they get angry when they find out they do and as if it's somebody else's fault. It's like it's no one's fault. Right. It's just the way it is. But you know, I believe that if you don't give me a seat at the table, I'm going to pull up my folding chair and sit at the table until I get a seat. That's the way that I operate. And if, you know, I'll give you an example. When I moved back to Bakersfield from Dallas, Texas, this is a very redneck city. Very. There's great people here. You know, you have to find those people and connect with them. And then you also have to show yourself in excellence and then bring other women up in excellence. And that's what our club has done. So they can say, wait a minute. They really are amazing. They really are fabulous. Because if one win, we should open the door for everyone to come through. So I started serving on the board. And listen to this. California State University here in Bakersfield, a D1 university, they have a, um, a board called Roadrunner Scholarship Funds and they raise money for scholarship. In its 45 year history, they never had a black person on the board. I was the first black woman to serve on that board in its 45 year history. And so I took it very personal. And this is what we have to do when we're going to territory that we're not at. Take it personal. Year one, I got the diversity award. Year two, I got the inspirational um, award. Year three, I'm one of the team captains and we're already raising the most funds. I'm a black woman doing that. Mm -hmm. And so it is important to me that not just this organization, but every organization look at us in excellence. 
Right, right. You know, it, it doesn't surprise me. I was when you told me you were Bakersfield. All I did was shake my head and laugh. I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, I remember Bakersfield back in the day. <laughs> really? Uh, you we, lived here? No, we used to travel through Bakersfield. Our family is military, and so we were. We I had it better. We were we were stationed in Atwater, California. So if you come straight up, yeah. See, there's that look. <laughs> I'll ask about it. Yes, the tiny little town with two stop. Well, I think they have three now, but back then they only had two exits and that was only because the Air Force Base was one of them. And we would have to, on our trip down to LA, because we had relatives uh, down there, we would always have to pass through Bakersfield. And the only thing, I will tell you the truth, back then, the best thing about Bakersfield, they had a Kmart and they had an IHOP. They were the only place in, Cal in this part of California that had an IHOP. So you know we had to stop because we moved right. from Maryland. Right. So you, you feeling me? I am <laughs> feeling you. <laughs> well, I cannot tell you. I remember the looks you used to get when you would go into the Kmart to pick up supplies or something. Yes. Wait, there's one yeah. of them here. We it was very real. Yeah, it was very. Real. So when you said you were in Bakersfield, all I, I, I laughed. I howled. <laughs> you know, a lot of people laugh when they hear, like, I say that I'm from Bakersfield, but I am so proud to be from Bakersfield. I was actually born here left for 20 plus years and came back. It's a totally different city. And I do believe that the opportunities are available if you go get them. That's, I, I mean, you know, maybe I'm just naive, but that's what I believe. And I believe in going after every single thing that I want. And if I don't care what race you are, I have, re I, honestly, I have to say that I've been blessed to receive a lot of love from this community, no matter what color the person is but i do understand that i have a responsibility to elevate my own market because there are a lot of challenges that are still there and so i take it very personal and i always say that i'm exclusive to be inclusive that's a good that's a good model right there yeah because it's so true and it's it's nice that's you know that's one thing we should talk about if you're a woman whether you're a speaker or an author or you're trying to start your little business whatever you're doing you should really look into sitting on boards absolutely and absolutely. yeah they don't people don't actually tell you why you want to sit on a board and i'm sorry if you're a person of color more than likely you're going to be the only one a lot of that happens. A lot of that happens. Um, I serve on some really great boards, and there are some excellent black women serving on the, some of these boards with me. For example, the Bakersfield Women's Business Conference, which is in its 28th year. This year, Diane Williams, who is a black woman, is a chair, mm -hmm. and there's about four of us on that board. But this has been going on for 27 years. I honestly don't believe that most people are trying to lock us out. I, I just don't believe that. But if you don't come to the table, then you're on the menu. So I want to be at the table. Well, one of the things that I do talk about and I teach is the importance of building your brand through community service. Mm -hmm. So most people on those boards are already successful. They're giving back because they're passionate about these causes. And I sit and I watch some of these people that serve on different boards that I serve and I'm just impressed at the heart in which they give. And what happens is you build relationships, and this is important. And I guess that wasn't the reason I went for it, but you build relationships. They get to know you. They get to know what you do. They open a door. This month, I'm going to have the opportunity to speak to 32 McDonald operators at their scholarship dinner. And that comes because I serve on the guy who does the PR for them. We serve on the board together. So you're absolutely right in saying that. Yeah. yeah. And a lot, that's not something that's stressed. And you're, you, you brought up a good, another good point. People of color don't think they think they're being excluded. And it's like a lot of times it's not that you're excluded. They just don't know you're there. Absolutely. <laughs> you Absolutely. Know? And that's really what I wanted to build this social club for mm -hmm. is so that I can present urban women collectively in excellence. And it's been effective. These women have walked in doors that typically they would not walk in. They built relationship with people they typically would not have access to. So I took my brand, attached it to the club and opened the doors. And I was very strategic about them walking in excellence. And now what you do with it is on you. But then even with doing that, what happens sometimes is I, I'm learning that women get caught up and forget mm -hmm. the, how they got the opportunity. And so we have to always remember, how did we get to where we are? If someone contacts me based on seeing me on your show, I'm forever grateful to you. I will not get arrogant and forget that. So I think we have to also be grateful and humble when the opportunities are presented to us. And Absolutely. don't forget that. 
That's so true because you never know who's going to see you or who knows somebody or that's, you know, oh, hey, I know the speaker down in, in you know, down in Kern County. She's got, you know, contact her. Yeah, so you didn't think I remember the county. <laughs> oh. That's why I have to laugh. I said, you on it. <laughs> Well, see, I'm, a, I'm up here in Sacramento County, and I'm like, right now, I'm working with some people and to shoot a film. And I told one of them, I'm like, you just seem, you keep thinking that everybody knows where Sacramento is. I they- live from one end of this state to the other, and I am sorry, I know how California is. It's so big. People tend to be very, you know, isolated. Yes. They, I mean, unless it's all over the news every five minutes. They don't know where these places are, and they're like, but they should know the state capital. Okay, you don't even know the state capital of New York. <laughs> so uh, New what, York. Would make, yeah, exactly. what would make you think, because most people will sit there and think it's New York. It's like, no, it's Albany. And then they look at you. Wrong. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but, well, I didn't know you were answering. Sorry. No. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm always open to learn. I'm not, I'm not the brightest, but I can tell you I'm the most creative. Yeah. Like, see, you're down, you, you come from Texas. I can guarantee you, I can ask somebody what the capital of Texas is. They will either swear, they will either swear for down as Dallas, or I'm like, don't you mean Austin? No. Yes. I you're, think just you mean smart. you're just smarter than most of us. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. Well, the good part about being military is I moved a lot, so you had no choice but to learn this. Yes. But when you're talking to a lot of people, you'll find out that if they've never been anywhere, they forget they don't, they don't care about whatever happens outside of their little area because they've never been anywhere else. And I guess, unless it's on the news, but if you're a military, then sometimes you have to correct them because they just think everybody knows. Okay. Absolutely. And then when, and it always makes you come across like you're being a smart aleck or a know-it-all. It's like, no, you've been places. You've lived in other states. You've lived in other countries. You're talking to people whose whole existence is whatever they see on the, on the television or on YouTube or whatever they're watching, but that's their world. They've never been anywhere else. And I think the things that you're sharing, so let's say we have a woman among us that is smart and that is bright and that is world travel. I think it's okay to give her her kudos. I think you're brilliant. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Thank you for teaching me that. We have to remember those courtesies. A lot of people may not know the things that you're talking about. So say thank you. Thank you. That's so true. And but rather, you know what's going to happen. Rather than say thank you, you're going to get that 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 snarky, catty thing that people do. And then you have to remind us, like, I'm sorry, I've been in the world. Don't get an attitude. I'm just. You, you know, one of the things I think we have to teach people how to treat us. I'm yeah. very quick to say to someone that kind of energy doesn't work in my space, so it doesn't work for me. So I'm shutting it down. I don't really care if I hurt your feelings, if it doesn't work for you, because at the end of the day, if I'm not 100% okay, I can't be my very best. And so we have to be able to walk in our personal truth. Yep. See, the good part is you can see me over here struggling. Uh, Everybody else is like, what's she looking at? Well, (laughs) currently, (laughs) my secretary cat has arrived and is demanding food. And yes, I have a secretary cat. (laughs) Hi, cat. (laughs) <laughs> yeah but say hi you want to say you want to say hi no he's he's eating he'll be on screen in a minute okay. <laughs> everybody's gotten used to the secretary cat it's so funny people ask about the secretary cat like oh man <laughs> and they usually ask on days when he's not here <laughs> but um but it's very very true let's talk a little bit about uh your group she power okay um so what do you have coming down the pike with that? So we just finished our 20, um, April the 27th. We just finished our first annual Pink and Gold Gala. And it was like so, so, so amazing. We honored five women and then three women from our club and two junior she power. And just to really be able to see the gratitude and the gratefulness of these unsung she roles in our community was really what the club is all about, celebrating women who don't always get that celebration. Um, we celebrated Nikki Blue. She's in her third year of coaching. She just actually got offered to Pepperdine. Shannon oh. uh, Grove, who does amazing things in our community, and she's also up for Senate 2018. Melina Thorpe, who is the director of uh, the Biggest Cancer Center and Hospital here in Bakersfield. Adonica Stanley, she's a principal at one of our um, schools here, a phenomenal woman. 
and how many was that? Oh, and Christy Porter, she received the Woman of the Year. Just an amazing icon in our community. She recently gave out $28,000 last year in scholarships. So these women are really about change in our community. So it was a blessing to be able to honor them at the gala. That's good. And you said, now what did you say? The black and the red and gold? It's the black and gold. Black and gold. No, 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 no. What did I say? You got me saying stuff I didn't say. So I was going to say, I thought it was red. I thought you, I thought your colors were pink and pink and gold. gold. Gala. Pink and gold. Okay. It's, it must be my hair, black and red. Well, yeah, it is black. Or is that pink? Okay. Well, well wait a minute. Let's, let's, pink, let's huh? talk about that. I think it looks pink on here. Let's talk about that for a second because I remember <laughs> in when I was listening to you on the on the BS, you were talking about your branding and yes. how when you do things, you always wear your branding colors. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that. So I think it's important. With she power is definitely a pink brand. So a lot of times when I speak, I'll either be in pink, red, or orange. Those are my three signature colors that I speak in. Um, and I think it's important that people can identify you to things because for a very long time, for about three years, I wore all black um, because I was going through such a shift in my life. And I did not realize at that moment that I was actually mourning. Hi, secretary. And so when I really came into my you know, greatness, and I'm not ashamed to say that's what it is. I says, let me come to life and my colors and everything. So I'm really particular about what color I wear when I speak. So I'm wearing orange today for you. Great, great. And yep, see, I told you, Secretary Cat would make an appearance. Yeah, I saw that tail. <laughs> now, now he's just laying there staring at us like, <laughs> like he's at a tennis match. <laughs> But no, that, you know, that's a great thing. And I mean, even if you're just a public speaker, you should always attempt to show your brand. Yes. And if, even if that's just you wear your colors or maybe like a, something, something that speaks to the person. I agree. I mean, in Texas, I knew a lady, she would wear a hat every time she speaks. There's another lady I know that wears a crown um, or wears blue. So I think it's important, whether it's a pin, a brooch, you know, a certain color hair, Whatever it is that you are going to do to make yourself kind of have a signature, I think it's important to do that. Find out what that is and, and, and stay true to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, do you, you have a book, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the book. Um, how, how, what was it that inspired you to write it? Or was that just the culmination of things? Or was it something you always wanted to do? I've always wanted to be a speaking author. That was really... When I think back, it was my goal from a little girl. And so I was producing the TV show, Girls Who Talk in Dallas, Texas. And working with a lot of women, the message that I constantly got is they forgot to put themselves on the list. As you talked earlier, we're so busy, we have so much on our plate. So I wanted to really create something that was simple for them to do. And so I took a sabbatical for six months and I did interviews and research and just wrote this book. That was my job for six months. So it's the girlfriend's bucket list. And the title of the book is 369 Things a Woman Must Enjoy Before She Dies. And it really gives women 369 realistic ideas with the website or telephone number, whatever they need to make this happen. Because as women, I need all the information. Give it to me. I don't want to look for anything. Just give it all to me so I can do it. So that's what I wanted to do for women is to give them all the information and resources and say, get out there and put yourself on the list again. Start living again and stop existing. Absolutely. So what are some of the realistic things that you can do out of the 369? Can you give us some examples? Absolutely. I'll share something as simple as a lot of times when readers get the book and they read it, they'll kind of tag me or take me along the journey. One um, lady, her name is Johanna, she bought the book. And one of the tasks that she took was wearing a skirt for 30 days. You say, Arlene, that sounds simple. But in that, for, uh, I wore pants forever before I started wearing skirts, okay? Exactly, a lot of us do. <laughs> we don't realize that we are suppressing our feminine energy and enhancing our masculine energy. Just with that simple one, 30 days of wearing a skirt, she documented it every day, took a picture. And as the days went by, you were able to see her feminine energy come into the forefront. It was phenomenal. And so by the 30 days, she did a video with all of them. And you could see the transformation. Even today, she's a lot more gentle and soon and soft. 
and her power. And she said that her dad said to her, what happened to you? You're different. <laughs> that simple, that simple bucket list item of owning your girly she power changed her life. Now she's walking more boldly into who she is. She actually has two master's degree and never told anybody. She didn't want anybody to know how great she is. That one simple step of exactly, girl, I'll be bragging from everybody. Look at me, let's say what I got. I got two masters, girl. Oh, was, I'm sorry. That was a journey she had to go through. And so that was wow. one of the things that I know that changed her life. Okay. I've been wearing skirts forever. I, uh, okay. I never a thought about it. A lot of women have not. I, yeah. Don't let I'm me know. I'm one of them. I love you know? my pants. Okay, I will. Oh, trust. Yo, yo, don't don't give me in the right pair of pants. And you know, I, I was all yeah. pants. <laughs> I have to tell people this. I am probably, and it's funny. The people that work with me, they know me. I am more. I am more fearsome in in a dress than I am in pants. Yes. Because they know if I put if, if I put on my pants, I got my cute shoes. I got my cute. You know, I got my look. Right. I know, if I got the skirt, it's they're gonna be like, "Yeah, she'll just take off the shoes and commence to beating you with them." So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't mess with her when she's in the dress. Like, mm -hmm. You own your power. I do. They they know better. <laughs> just like mm, you, evil. Only yeah. in a dress. Yes. Yeah. So the running gag is, don't make me take off the Prada. <laughs> um. But it's it's so true. That's cute though. That would be that's an interesting thing to wear, you know, for women who don't wear dresses and yes, and the femininity. And that's you know that does bring up a good point. Women have been again so pulled and picked and told that it's they there it it's almost as if only certain women can embrace their their femininity or their their womanhood, their sexuality as a woman. And if anybody else does it, you're a bad person. And I Women have to own their sexuality. We have to own our sexuality because if you think about it, how did you get here? Your mother enjoyed some great sex, probably. Uh, I would think it's so. okay to. I think it's okay to say that I enjoy sex. Sex is good to me. I think that's an energy that we kind of suppress and think, oh my God, it's going to make us whorish. No, that's what makes us feminine is our sensuality. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I've never met a man yet that didn't want to be with a woman who was being sensual. Absolutely. You know, but like if you're a Christian, they don't want to talk about sex in the church. You know, it's kind of suppressed. No, oh, no, they, they, they don't want to take about. They don't want to talk about a woman's sexuality in the church. They'll talk about sex as long as it has something to do with uplifting the man, and you know, because he's got his property, so to speak, his woman and his kids. Sex is only used to uplift them mm. and elevate them. They'll talk about it when it's the family unit. But, right. you know, and it's always a good thing for, you know, they still talk about it. It's okay for guys to go out and date around. Now, I don't know who they're dating while they're dating around, but it's okay for them to go out and date around. But you can't be a woman and go out and date around because that makes you a bad person. That is the, that is the message that is sent across. I think yeah. it's a message especially for our young girls yeah. because you have to own that's a power that is a power and you have to know how to own it and how to be responsible with that power so those conversations have to happen yeah and they, but they have to start because you're talking you know coming at it from the perspective women now way different than women you know 10 15 20 even 30 years ago so if the women who are 30 years ago have become moms most of them still don't own their own sexuality and yeah, right you know and with that it goes into their workplace if they do go into the corporate america it's you know that's like battlefield and basically it's just a bunch of guys standing it's like going to a club you see the guys standing around the perimeter of the club checking out all the women who are on the dance floor that's pretty much how corporate America is. And any woman that comes in there and she's like, you can look at me all you want to. I look a certain way and I own this. She then becomes set upon by the other females because how dare you not, you know, we do things this way because we don't want to be looked at that way. Right. That's not my problem. <laughs> and I think even in corporate America, the women have a responsibility. Um, you're wearing the hard navy and black suits. You're wearing man cut suits um, to look more powerful. And if you're not, you're judged as not being powerful. 
So I think it's their responsibility to find that balance for all the women who are going to go into corporate America. You do not have to dress like a man to be powerful because a man is not dressing like a woman to be powerful. Well, a little different in these damn times, but you know, in corporate America, <laughs> you don't see a lot of men dressing like women. So I think we have to walk in there. And if I'm going to wear a navy suit, I mean, a, a suit, I'm coming with the brightest fluorescent pink suit I can find with a satin shirt up underneath. I'm walking in with my femininity and I'm not making an apology for it. No, no, and you shouldn't. And mine are purple, by the way. I have purple uh, suits that are for that very purpose. Um, and, and actually, we're the worst in color. Yeah. Women in corporate America, get yourself a whole bunch of colorful suits and wear them. Get rid of the navy and the black for, yeah. for board meetings. Yep. <laughs> and it's funny you should say that. I actually do. I did work with a gentleman who did wear women's lingerie underneath his suit. And he had the heels to prove it. I'm just like, and nobody said a thing because he was the boss. But you're like, do they have to be that bright of red? Really? Red patent leather? Seriously? And the thing is, we can't, in our society today, we really can't voice our opinions about those kind of things unless we get attacked. And I think it's very wrong because we should be allowed to walk in our truth, whatever that may be, yeah. without that harsh judgment. But we're yeah. not. Yeah, wouldn't it be so nice if the, if the real world actually paralleled the fake world that they want to pretend that we live in? That progressive, all accepting world. Uh-huh, too bad the real world is none of that. <laughs> well, in my world, it's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know about their world either. They know it's not, but they still push it. I mean, it's still marketed. Uh, it, it's, it's very aggressively pushed. Um, I think we should be allowed to teach our own children lessons of acceptance instead of the world pushing it down their throat and making them accept things that go against what we teach in our home. And that's where the that's definitely where the conflict comes in. Yeah. If a child is being supported outside the home or being taught that it's okay, but then you come back into your home and your parents are ready to, you know, they're just die, ah, you're going to have a problem, and it causes a crisis, and that's really sad for a hopefully lot of people. Get it together. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, let's get a little bit of contact information for you before I forget. Okay, um, they can. Go to my website, www.arlenawaller.com. That's A-R-L-E-A-N-A-W-A-L-L-E-R. -L -L -E I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all under Arlena Waller. I'm on YouTube under She Power TV. They can reach me on my telephone number at my office at 661-532-8417. Okay. <laughs> um, there was one other thing I wanted to touch upon that you talked about, and that's the phone number. I noticed she gave out the phone number, which is not something you see or hear people do very often. Why, right. do you, why do you advocate the phone number? I believe that when you're building a brand or growing anything, you want to make it easy for people to reach you. So for some people, they're still traditional and want to pick up the telephone and call. There's people who want me to even fax proposals over to them. So I have to be able to, or you have to be able to communicate with your audience however they want you to communicate with them. And that is why I always share my office number. That's good. No, that's good. I, you know, I'm old school. I'm sorry. I like phones. I, 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 I miss talking to humans. And then I have those friends who are like, no, just text it. I'm your friend that's <sighs> text me. Mm -hmm. text for me. you via text i'll close a contract via text i even told my sister i speak in tongues via text she said Arlene, that's just going too far <laughs> okay now that i want you to videotape so we can all enjoy that one the but next time I'm, I'm, for someone i'm speaking in tongues on text i'll send you a copy <laughs> so i'll say touch and agree come on hallelujah yes praise the lord <laughs> sometimes i'm telling you my text my t talk to text it speaks in tongues Oh yeah, with something I have never—I didn't even say. Oh yeah, that talk to text is a mess. I sent a friend of mine a text about something, and it put the word cocaine in there. And she's like, "You're using cocaine?" I was like, "What are you talking about?" She's like, "Look at your text." I'm like, "Oh my god, no, I'm not using cocaine!" Ah! <laughs> <laughs> delete it, delete it. <laughs> mine, mine, mine is just equally bad. It's put in some stuff, and I'm like, first of all, the entire sentence I said 
did not sound anything like what you typed. <laughs> it's, it's, that was bad technology. Mm. So I, I always say at the beginning, I'm voice texting, ignore any errors, make the best of this as you can, and then I go into my message. <laughs> right? I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I'll sit there and go, I know I just said hello, and why did you type that word? <laughs> it's not it doesn't even come that way <laughs> but yeah it, it has happened when i've sent texts and people are looking at me like yolanda what did you just send me i don't know and then i'll go back and read it because once we talk and send we assume even though we know that it doesn't happen we just assume yeah. that it does, and we hope for the best yeah you're supposed to edit edit yes Right. So what else do you have coming up uh, that you want to talk about, promote events? What you got? So I'm always looking for speaking opportunities. Um, it's just I've grown to really love this stage. So if there's anyone out there looking for a speaker that will bring some energy and edutainment to their stage, please call, email or go to my website. I also have a pink dress power tour that's coming up. It's a six city tour that will be happening in August and September. We're going to go to Las Vegas, to Fresno, to Dallas, to Los Angeles, Bakersfield, and Atlanta. So if there's any speakers on the circus that's looking for opportunity in any of those cities, please email me. Um, we're almost filled in some cities, but we have openings in others. This is a great opportunity, I think, especially for speakers who really are dynamic but need a platform to continue growing their speaking and have nuggets of knowledge to bring to the table. Our goal is to bring in professional women into the luncheon and to really power them up to go back out to the world and lead. Okay, great. All right. And once again, thank you for joining us on this edition of the Atlanta Argent Show. And I'm your host, Atlanta Beat Argent. And this has been my guest, this is Arlena Weller.